As we start to age, those systems start to fail. So what we're trying to do is find ways to make older people have cells that basically have similar functionality to when they were young. So we do this fundamentally by using human stem cells and we use genetic engineering to basically program in the cells the functions we want. Fundamentally, I'm a genome engineer. and I've been working on this area since the human genome was unveiled in the early 2000s. Welcome to Office Hours. So the main problem we're trying to solve here is the limited therapeutics that we have for people with diseases that really can't be cured right now or treated. So we're kind of getting at the limits of what we can do with small molecules or chemicals or drugs, right? These are non-specific. They target random things that we don't really know and we just kind of hope that they have some kind of treatment. We're also getting close to what we can do with just biologics like antibodies. They only have so many things they can treat by binding things in the body. What we're fundamentally trying to do is harness the abilities of our cells, which natu have natural healing abilities and multifunctional capabilities, to expand the possibilities to treat diseases that really have no other way being treated. We're really at a place now where clinical trials are often failing. We often hear about how we invest in lots of drugs, we spend tons of money on certain modalities that don't really give people a better quality of life, better health spans, even to people who have diseases that really there's just nothing. And so we really have to think outside the box. I think we have to change the entire paradigm of how we think about treatment. And so I thought what is, what is the biggest possible thing we can do, which is to use cells fundamentally like little miniature surgeons. What we're trying to do is program the cells to have the ability to go in, find things, treat at the site in a way that we can program in a safer and more accessible way. We've used large-scale genome engineering, an approach we call genome writing. So this is at the scale of 100,000 base pairs of DNA or more. Human chromosomes are 176 million base pairs, right? So this is a big section of chromosomes, but this is encompasses many, many genes. So we have the ability to rewrite sections of the human genome. So we've done this in induced pluripotent stem cells, which can become any cell type in the body, which now expands our capabilities to make basically any cell in the body, which includes immune cells that can do adaptive immune responses or neural cells. The bigger part of what we've done is actually we've made a universal donor iPSC. What I mean is that I've taken one person's iPSC, we've re-engineered it to match anybody else's immune system such that it can now be accepted. So this completely frees us from the patient. So now we have this cell platform that we can keep re-engineering, increasing its effectiveness, its safety profile, as well as making it much more accessible and easier to manufacture, which will eventually bring down costs. We have lots of different programs. We're basically more of a platform lab, so sort of a biotech startup. We're trying to launch out different programs, but fundamentally we have this platform cell line that we turn into cells called myeloid cells. So these are cells called dendritic cells or macrophages. These are cells that move about all throughout our body. They're called white blood cells. And so they can go anywhere. They're also found in all kinds of different tissues. So what we do is we use our genetic engineering technology to put in what we call synthetic gene circuits. So you can think of it like a genetic software package, which will have different kinds of apps that you can plug and play into the cells. And so this plug and play capability in the genetic software allows us to confer different abilities to our cells. And since the cells can move about the body, we can get them to go into the brain, for instance. So we are trying to convert macrophages into a cell that can go from the bloodstream, go into the brain, remove Alzheimer's pathologies like amyloid beta, tau, and eventually even stimulate neurogenesis. We can also use the same platform to treat degenerative tissue diseases, so things like knee joints. So when you have a knee injury and you have repeated injuries, you eventually get this inflammatory response in your knee joint. And so this causes tissue degeneration. So we want to use the same cells to go in there and reduce the inflammation and stimulate repair of your joints. We also use similar types of cells like dendritic cells to eventually go into solid tumors. They're extremely difficult to treat because they find a way to make the immune system 
not see them essentially. So we are programming dendritic cells to actually go into the solid tumor and make the tumor essentially be visible to the immune system again. So we, we built these off-the-shelf stem cells, right? So this means we can make a match for any person on the planet now. And this is especially important for ethnically diverse people. It's very hard to find a match for them. So we can actually engineer in that match for anybody, especially people who are actually mixed race. It's even harder. So we can now build that. We then put in this software package. We can write in DNA writing, this software package, gives it these new multifunctional abilities, and then we convert them into macrophages or dendritic cells. And we use this again by a synthetic gene circuit. And we can do this very quickly by turning on the circuit. The eventual idea is that we literally just inject it into the bloodstream and the cells will make their way either to the solid tumor if they're a dendritic cell or through the blood-brain barrier where they will actually naturally find the pathologies. And ideally we have program them to withstand the natural things that prevent the cells from functioning in the first place, but also have enhanced functionalities and to then also help stimulate regrowth of neurons. This is very pie in the sky right now. We basically are focusing on all the hard diseases and we have a long enough timeline to do the research and hopefully eventually get out there so we can get out to you know, clinical trials and eventually patients. Alzheimer's is personal. I am not an Alzheimer's researcher by training. I actually jumped into this field two years ago. That's one of the benefits of being a faculty researcher. This is what we call academic freedom. I can just kind of decide, hey, I don't know this problem, but I'm gonna go after it. The reason why it's personal is because my wife discovered through 23andMe that she has one of the main genes that increases risk for Alzheimer's. It's a gene called APOE4. We have two copies of these types of genes in our genome, she has one copy. It increases her risk significantly. Not only that, but her mother developed Alzheimer's four years ago and she passed away last year. So we had to go through this entire process watching exactly what happens to people when they have Alzheimer's. So I decided I actually have the ability to do something about this. So for me, it's personal that I develop a therapy in case something happens to my own wife.